Hi everyone, I'm Professor Sally Eaves and we're live today from the heart of the COP26 event in Glasgow. And one of the breaking news announcements really about tangible action has been the launch of the Alliance for Clean Air, the first corporate global initiative of its kind, bringing together top businesses to tackle the key challenge of air pollution. And I'm delighted to discuss this today with Eva Shearer, Chief Financial Officer of Rail Infrastructure at Siemens Mobility, who's also doing awesome work with WEF and many other organisations organizations really spearheading tech as a force for good. Welcome Eva, it's awesome to speak to you today. Thank you so much Sally, I'm so happy to be here. Oh thank you and let's get to the heart of this new initiative. It'd be great to kind of explain to people what's behind this Alliance for Clean Air and what that really means. Yeah absolutely and maybe I just also explain how I actually got to be involved in all of this. Absolutely. Um, obviously also representing Siemens here but um, I've been working with the World Economic Forum for a while um, as a young global leader there but I've also been part of the Global Future Council for Clean Air for the last year. And that's where we've really been crafting this alliance with various council members. And the most important one being obviously Jane Burston from the Clean Air Fund, um, who've, who's really been amazing in helping us to understand the need for action and how we can tackle this. Because I think what's absolutely apparent is that air pollution is a topic that is underrepresented in today's society while the health impl implications are actually severe. I mean, we have to consider that 90% uh, of the world's population actually breathe air that is harmful to their health. It, it's unbelievable. And the World Health Organization, they have reported that there are actually 7 million deaths per year that are caused by air pollution. 7 million, that is more than 15% of all deaths. So I think it's apparent that we had to do something. And for us, it was very clear that it has to be a joint effort from governments, from companies and from society and from all of us. And that's why we set up this Alliance for Corporate Action. And what is it really about? So we've now brought together 10 founding members as a start of big global companies who have committed to this. And obviously, we're very sure that we will have many more to come, but the 10 founding members that we do have, and I want to mention them because each of them is important. So it is Accenture, it is Bloomberg, it is Biogen, Google, GoTo, Ikea, Maersk, Mahindra Group, Wipro, and obviously Siemens. And those companies have committed to three major tangible things. As you mentioned, it has to be tangible, right? And the first thing is that within the first 12 months of now founding the Alliance, and we founded it yesterday, um, we will uh, measure and then commit to reduction targets when it comes to our air pollution footprint. And we will work together on a methodology how to do that. And the, the second topic is that we've committed to champion clean air across our networks internally and externally together with our employees our customers and our suppliers and the third point is that we use our own assets in an innovative way to tackle air pollution so our technologies i mean you know siemens mobility very well sally right so just an example maybe from my business the rail infrastructure business which i'm actually quite proud of and that's our dynamic charging solution that we have piloted it's also called e-highway. So basically where we have battery electric trucks that can be charged via overhead contact lines on motorways. And we have pilot projects there in Germany. We have interesting discussions going on in the UK also and in Sweden. And we really see momentum growing. And we believe this is a key technology to tackle how to bring road freight to a zero emissions level. Absolutely. I love that. And what I love about that the most is, well, two aspects. A, that collaboration. I think if we reflect over what's happened over the last 18 months or so, you know, with COVID, the, the good things to have come out of that has been that rise of collaboration, co-creating. We're seeing how we can tackle the biggest problems of our time by coming together. And I couldn't think of a more important one around clean air, both outside and also indoor air, actually, as well. So that alliance, that collaboration, I think is so, so key. Um, but also that tangible aspect, you know, COP26 is an amazing Amazing. You know, we're, we've been here, the, 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 the dynamism of, of dialogue is huge, but people want to see that dialogue, you know, translated into tangible action and collaboration to tackle it. And this, I couldn't think of a better way of actually demonstrating what we can do. So that's wonderful. And I think you've already alluded to it a little bit already about the why, but but from a Siemens perspective, you know, joining as a founding partner right at the start of this, you know, how did that come about? What was the why behind doing that right here, right now? 
Yes, and I'm obviously really, really proud that the company I work for actually was the first founding member of the alliance. And because for us, it was really clear that this is something that we had to do because it's the right thing to do. Sustainability for us is a business imperative. And actually, back in September 2015, we were one of the first biggest global industrial companies to commit to become net zero by 2030. And since then, decarbonization has been a part of many agendas of sustainability agendas of big corporations. But today, only actually one fifth of the 2000 largest publicly listed companies have net zero targets. So it's still not enough, even though it is a big topic, it is still not enough and we have some way to go and we need to really accelerate our action and we have to beat our own targets and we have to bring air pollution into the game because there's hardly any company right now that has air pollution as part of their agenda. I mean, as of yesterday, when we launched the Alliance, we have 10 more, which is good, but it's really not a big topic in the corporate world right now. And what's important about air pollution is that it is local and that change can be really brought about almost instantly. We could see that last year during the beginning of the pandemic, when we had the first lockdowns all around the world, within days, the skies were blue again, the air was clean. So, and, and, and that's really something where we see, we know that it can happen and we know how quickly it can happen and how quickly we can improve the quality of people's lives with that. And so for Siemens, we believe one important point really is to tackle this issue together with our customers, with our technologies, um, with our customers that we support across industry, buildings, transport and energy grids, because we believe we need to be on that journey together. And obviously, we need to, need to use our whole ecosystem. I mean, we're a big company. We have 250,000 employees. We have 65,000 suppliers. We operate in 180 countries. And using that ecosystem and engaging them to fight for that topic is is very powerful and I've been also talking to my team how we can really accelerate further when it comes to that topic and what we noticed is that the nomenclature that we use in, in business air quality is just not part of that. So we, we do not talk about things um, when it comes to quality of life and how it impacts us immediately. We talk about how do we improve our customers' operations? We talk about how do we increase productivity for our customers? We even talk about how do we help our customers on their decarbonization uh, journey, that we do. But we do not talk about how do we help our customers improve their customers' quality of life. And if we make that connection, I think it's extremely powerful because we can motivate people in a completely, in a completely different way. And that also um, comes to, to really the language that we're using and the roles that we have as business leaders because we talk about decarbonization, we talk about 1.5 degrees, we talk um, about scope three, we talk about net zero, but how many of us business leaders actually equate the work we do with saving lives? I mean, unless you work in the healthcare industry, probably not many, but as you know, I work in transport and, and transport is um, responsible for, or actually transport is actually the, the sector with the fastest growing emissions. And um, they're up now even compared to pre-pandemic levels, um, mainly also because many people are still re reluctant to use public transport again. And, and when we look there at what we do within mobility and we have um, apps, for example, that we provide, and I'm sure that you know that too, for trip planning, for route planning, right? And we help people to get from A to B in a sustainable way, um, to choose the best route across different modes of transport, be it bus, be it uh, bike share, be it hopefully also a train. Um, but do we make it clear enough that those decisions, the mode of transport that I select, be it a car, or a train that this impacts air quality in neighborhoods and it impacts the quality of people's lives and we want to really work on that messaging and also make clear how our portfolio can help there and I would really love it if in a year from now we talk and we can be at a point where also through this alliance we can help to make air quality a part of people's decision making. 
I love that. And I'll, I'll hold you to that as well. Let's do that in a year time. We'll revisit that. I think that's fantastic. It's all about being you know, transparent, that commitment, that accountability. But also, I think the other thing that was echoing through what you were saying there about kind of using sphere of influence as well, right across the ecosystem and helping consumers and stakeholder partners make conscious choices and take those tangible actions. So I really love that. And um, I'm writing at the moment and I've got this little catchphrase in my head about contagion of change. But that is kind of what we're talking about here, a positive contagion of change. But for good so I, I love that and I also love the fact you're talking about measurement as well so I think when, when we talk about social impact um, um, it's sometimes that area that gets left behind in that conversation and also I think metrics can vary across different organizations so an alliance like this that's going to help almost standardize some metrics around a key area of sustainability in terms of clean air is a very great thing as well because it'll help that standardization and again can make people make informed educated choices from transport to other sectors as well so I think that's superb um, it leads me on to a final point which is what's next so we've talked about getting together in a year which is fantastic as so we're leading up to that milestone what would you like to see over that period of change in 12 months how would you like that alliance to look at and the impacts that you, you can take in that time period yeah and you mentioned one important point there and that is measurement so that will be one of the first action items that we will get together with with the members of the alliance and we will commit to metrics and how we will measure our air pollution footprint in our in, in our internal operations and in our supply chain because only what we can actually measure we can then target and we can then reduce and so that will be the basis then for clear reduction targets and um, these reduction targets we need to have within 12 months this is the commitment so we can talk about that in a year then <laughs> Um, and that will be one bit. And, and the other bit is really that we want to do a lot of awareness and communication measures when it when it comes to to clean air. And we will also tackle the topic um, at Davos at the annual meeting um, of the World Economic Forum. So there we have a couple of sessions planned. So that will definitely be then another accelerator for this very important issue. Oh, that is superb, Eva. I'm so glad to speak to you about this today. Um, funnily enough, I just did a round table about indoor air pollution um, because the amount of time we're, we're spending indoors as well and you know the impact that can have not just on productivity but on health and well-being, et cetera, as well. So whether it's indoor or outdoor, I think air pollution is probably one of the most pressing issues of our time, particularly around the sustainability and climate space. Um, and improving that air that we breathe has so many immediate and tangible benefits to people, to communities, to business too. So getting this right, it's, it's a shared value proposition for everyone. So it has to be right raised up at that agenda. So I think this is a fantastic um, step forward and a collaborative one as well, which is an amazing thing to bring this alliance for good around clean air quality. So thank you so much for sharing all that latest news from COP26. And I can't wait to revisit this with you and follow the journey over the next 12 months. And I'll be delighted to support it as well. Thank you so much, Sally. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time. My absolute pleasure. Speak soon and thank you all for watching too. And I'll share some more information so you can follow up and get all the details of the new alliance and, and ways to get involved and find out more. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.